Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 38th episode of my series where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it had, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. Continuing on with my effort of covering the obvious all-time favorites in the genre, this is probably the only album that could have been done before the last two and nobody would bat an eye. Of course, I'm talking about Ready to Die, one of the two classic solo albums Big would work on prior to his murder. The latter, which was Life After Death, was still completely Biggie's vision, but it would be released just 16 days after his tragic murder, which hauntingly would make Ready to Die the only album he would release while he was alive. However, Biggie accomplished something with this LP that most rappers would spend their entire career trying to achieve and very few would succeed. In my Illmatic video, I talked about how Nas raised the bar in such a way at the time it made what a lot of the other rappers were doing sound less impressive by comparison. However, Ready to Die was one of the few albums in 94 that was able to withstand that heat. I also mentioned in my last video how Tupac's defining quality, for me at least, was his undeniable presence, personality, and command of the mic. But the reason I've always personally preferred Biggie is in my opinion he has just as distinct a character and voice, but gets the nod over Pac as a lyricist, again for my taste at least. I feel like his stylistic influence reached many of my favorite rappers. Even my all-time favorite rapper, MF Doom, was clearly directly inspired by Big, and you can hear the difference with his early work in KMD that he did from before Biggie came on the scene. I feel like he took notes of Biggie's deeper tone and heady rhyme schemes, but delivered it in a more underground, creative way, in the vein of someone like Cool Keith. There's many classic LPs from this era with multiple all-time great instrumentals on them. For example, the insane amount of classic, instantly recognizable beats on an album like Reasonable Doubt or 2001, or even Golden Age classics like Strictly Business or It Takes a Nation of Millions. However, in my opinion, the top three biggest instrumentals off Ready to Die could go against the top three from literally any other album in the genre. While practically every beat on here is iconic, I feel like you'd be really hard-pressed to find an LP with three songs to stand against Juicy, Big Papa, and Who Shot Ya. Those first two are so transcendent of genre and culture that virtually anyone you ask will have at least heard them before, even if they adamantly dislike and avoid hip-hop. Continuing to carry the torch of skilled and creative writing that Rakim had passed down, Biggie distanced himself from the more rigid and predictable rhyme schemes of the 80s, and it shut the people up who would say rap is just talking. In the grand scheme of music, I feel like Biggie's voice is way closer to being its own instrument than it is someone just talking. I've mentioned how that speech-like writing approach was something that legends like Chuck D or Ice Cube completely made work, and it totally fit with the themes of injustice and oppression that those guys were touching on. But while Biggie touches on those issues here as well, it's noticeably more padded with more pop, radio-friendly moments. This was most likely due to Diddy, and while people love to spread rumors about him and act like he's never helped anyone in his entire life, it's undeniable that his mentoring and executive production played a large role in making these albums what they were. We very well may not have gotten Juicy or Big Papa if it weren't for Puff, especially since he not only executive produces alongside Mr. C, but he assists with beat making on multiple tracks here. However, the real stars for these instrumentals would have to be guys like DJ Premier, Lord Finesse, Easy Mo B, Blues Brothers, Rashad Smith, Poke of the Trackmasters, and Chucky Thompson. Another giant difference between this album and All Eyes on Me is where Tupac's magnum opus is covered in wall-to-wall -wall features, Ready to Die has only one in the form of Method Man, who is the only rapper who actually had the honor of appearing on both classics, All Eyes on Me and Ready to Die. As he was known to do, Puff pops up on here with some uncredited ad-libs, but it's used in a pretty creative and clever way by having Diddy on the other end of the phone for the gut-wrenching suicidal thoughts. This has traditionally always been my favorite song on here because not only is the beat haunting and Diddy trying to convince Big to not commit suicide is chilling, but the context is what really makes it special to me. 
This was at a time where suicide had an even worse stigma than today, and it most definitely was not a common, casual topic in hip-hop. This type of brutal honesty probably made a lot of people uncomfortable, and it would have been much easier and more profitable to leave a song about suicide off this album. But Diddy saw what Big was going for, and I think it's commendable he didn't just opt to leave that song off, fearing for a bad image or rap from the label. He knew the big smash hits would cover the billboard commercial side of things, so he allowed and even encouraged Biggie to fill the rest of the project with his dense, infectious, and streetwise verses he specialized in. And this blend is what I ultimately believe made Ready to Die such a massive success, because I've never heard anyone say this album is whack or aged poorly. It doesn't sound modern or fresh necessarily, but you have to keep in mind, at the time hip-hop was still growing and finding its sound, and a lot of albums from the late 2000s don't even sound modern. Honestly, a lot of music from even the early 2010s has aged badly. But Ready to Die isn't supposed to sound modern today. This album is really the golden standard for 90s New York hip-hop, and even if rhyme schemes and patterns have advanced since Big's time, his storytelling ability, overall skills as an MC, and pure dedication to the craft solidifies Ready to Die as an experience that will be remembered as long as the genre exists. Just like a lot of these iconic game changers I'm talking about in this group, this album is so beyond influential. It can sound cliche to a new hip-hop fan on first listen, but if you do end up feeling that way, I highly suggest trying to push through it and keeping in mind that the only reason these tropes seem old and tired is because so many rappers, DJs, and beatmakers took inspiration from how big pop and their group of producers were able to execute this album. I've made this sort of comparison before, but it's like a desensitized teen going back to watch The Godfather or even Pulp Fiction and not thinking it's very violent because they grew up watching intense, gory horror movies. I feel like it's important to have an understanding, or at the very least, knowledge of whatever pioneers helped develop the given genre or art form you love. It's also super rewarding because the more you familiarize yourself with these old school gems, the more modern references you'll catch that you may have missed for years without even knowing it. Especially today, where sampling isn't something just reserved for hip-hop, it's something pretty much every genre does now. Once again, it hasn't been especially easy picking my favorites, since the albums I'm picking are almost all regarded as flawless, but for this one, my honorable mentions would have to be Things Done Changed, Juicy, Big Papa, Give Me the Loot, Everyday Struggle, Me and My Bitch, Unbelievable, and Dreams, or Just Playin'. I know that might seem like a lot, but trust me, I'm still leaving out some pretty amazing tracks. My personal three overall favorite songs would have to be The What, Suicidal Thoughts, and Who Shot Ya. Thank you for watching my 38th video. Next time, we're going back over to the West Coast for an album that completely changed the landscape of hip-hop, not just over here, but across the whole country. So be sure to check that out, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite moments off this culture shifter are. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? All right.